I said I got my boys here in the Hawaiian shirts, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, here we go. Iconography and symbols are incredibly important. It establishes a sense kind of cohesiveness and helps build a sense of inclusivity, which is especially important for a group like the Boogaloo Boys, who don't necessarily have a have an official membership system. It's just a way of like it's kind of like a wink and a nod at protests. It's like an in joke, essentially. The name is a reference to the 1984 movie Break In 2, Electric Boogaloo. In 2012, dudes on 4chan who were really looking forward to a second civil war started calling it Civil War II Electric Boogaloo. It's such a massive logical leap that social media sites took a while to catch up, but they did eventually start shutting the group down. To avoid social media crackdown, they started switching up their terms. So in place of Boogaloo, they used home phones like Big Igloo or Big Luau just to, so that they could kind of continue recruiting and, and operating on social media without getting detected. And then the luau was what inspired the Hawaiian shirt, which is one of their get up that they're most known for. So for example, at one point they called themselves the Alphabet Boys, which is a reference to federal agencies like DHS and FBI and ATF, because they would also be like fetishizing violence against federal law enforcement officers or police officers. And then the Alphabet Boys reference was sometimes presented in the form of like a Campbell's soup can um, with Alphabet Boys written somewhere on it. We need the shield. It's all about staying one step ahead of reporters, social media monitors, and law enforcement. And Boogaloos aren't the only extremists constantly reinventing their brand. The Proud Boys also have their trademark uniform. They became best known for their black and gold Fred Perry shirt that they co-opted. I think in the last year, they've definitely militarized their look. So often they're wearing like black and gold, but kind of with tactical gear on top of it. The other things that they are kind of incorporating into their symbolism and language, one of them is SAFO, which you see on their signs or t-shirts or hats, which means fuck around and find out. That's one of their slogans. They also use the OK hand gesture often when posing for group photos, which has been labeled by the Anti-Defamation League as something that's associated with white supremacy and the far right. Mark Pitt-Cavage is an expert on right-wing extremism with the Anti-Defamation League. He says the evolution of the OK gesture is one of the most unusual stories for a symbol he's seen. It was done as a hoax that then took on a life of its own. You have to go back to 4chan, the discussion forum that is the source of so many memes and so, so many problems. And so people started repeating the notion that the OK symbol was actually a symbol for white power, and this was what all white supremacists were doing. It was actually done to troll the media, to troll uh, uh, left-leaning people, right? It was done as this big joke. The more the outside world bought it, the more extremists used it, to the point where white supremacists did embrace it as their own. But this is the sort of thing that people on 4chan do. It's a little factory for stuff like this. But to take some symbol that's innocuous, like a, a polar bear emoji or um, a rainbow uh, 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 flag or something that's pure, as innocuous as they can take milk and then uh, proclaim that that is the new hate symbol that white supremacists are using and hope that they will be believed. This type of trolling isn't just dumb and annoying. It makes it much harder to identify who is a real dangerous threat as opposed to someone trying to bait the lids. This online ecosystem also makes it easier to design and spread new symbols fast. Just since the attack on the Capitol, groups have already created new symbols to push out. In the days after January 6th was these efforts to create imagery around the death of Ashley Babbitt, who was killed by Capitol Police um, inside the Capitol, kind of to turn her into a martyr. And there was this sort of like quite um, grim brainstorming effort that was happening on places like 4chan. They came up with a logo which kind of incorporates a woman standing in front of a capital with a drop of blood. And that's now kind of been shared around as like a kind of a martyr of that day, which is, you know, obviously troubling. 